All right, folks, this is Air Steven. Thanks so much to Jay Hertel and the Jumpin' on the Bed cast for letting us come in here and do this as the Caravan of Thieves is here in the Air Studio. They just came from the beach, uh, 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 the Beachland Ballroom, that is, up in Cleveland, where they played a uh, co-bill with some of our favorite, uh, another favorite band, the Asylum Street Spankers. So here they are. The Caravan of Thieves, hailing out of Connecticut. Hello! (laughs) Here's Candy. strung out and I sure could use a handout don't let me stand out in the rain I plan to be responsible and land another job until then can you please let me a 24 some candy I'm addicted to you candy now you got me Caravan of Thieves live 
in the air studio right here at WTJU Charlottesville. Thanks so much for, I know how hard it is to get on the road and get, especially with the spankers, and get out of town on time. <laughs> it, it was hard to get away from the spankers. Yes. Yeah. It was I, a spanking good time. I had to physically be removed from the spankers. <laughs> I, 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 did, did, they, um, did you guys end up with that um, drunken sailor encore that we, 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 we did? did. That. Yes. 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 Yeah. yes. Everybody got to make up a verse? Yeah. <laughs> Brian had a good one, actually, and they used it. I bet we can't use it on the air. <laughs> <laughs> Is it PC enough? Do you want yeah, to tell there's them? No swear words. Uh, smack him in the man boobs when he's eating at Denny's. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's kind of like a patty melt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are playing down at the Southern tonight, and I know you've been down at the Southern one time before after... Um, after a stint of uh, several gigs at Bell Rio, but we haven't seen you for about six months, and you've been really, really busy. You've been, I know you went on a tour where you opened up for your compatriots, the the Tom Tom Club. The Tom Tom, yeah, that was fun. Yeah, I was doing the du- the double duty as yeah. a, as was Bruce too, working hard, and Bruce got to play with you then too. Bruce yeah. Martin, who is a producer and a performer in the Tom Tom Club. Or? Correct, yeah, percussion a- and keyboards and. You know, so with us, he plays accordion and the broiler pan. And since I've seen you guys last, you've uh, come out with a new live CD. Mm-hmm. 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 And tell us about making that CD and, and, and what was the idea behind that? I know it's kind of a, well, it gives the whole blend of what you do, the carnival, the, the, uh, the vaudeville, the showtime. Because, folks, the Caravan of Thieves, excuse me, not the Caravan of Thieves, Caravan of Thieves <laughs> Is, um, is truly an act to witness as opposed to just listen to. Not that you can't enjoy listening to them, but when you see them, it becomes this whole theatrical presentation. And that's that's kind of why we made the live record. You know, We had our first album, Bouquet, and um, we're working on a new one that we're going to release next year, but in the meantime, we wanted to give something to people that would really give them an idea of what happens at the live show and the real experience, and also including some of the covers that we do, because we have a couple unconventional versions of some very popular songs. Pretty amazing Bohemian Rhapsody, I remember that. (laughs) Which you performed here uh, at WTJU before as well. But Candy's a new tune. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've got quite a few new ones that we've been sort of... We we refrained from putting them on the live record because we wanted to save them, but we were, you know... There's there's one new one on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we did put some new stuff on there, but and new versions of the older songs, but... But you're trying them out live for the... Yeah, yeah with the junk the percussion and the energy with the audience, and it was at this great right. theater in, in Connecticut, you know, our home base, and so it was like a real, really good time. Good, good captured a good night there. Mm-hmm. What night? What place did you do that at in Connecticut? It was at the Fairfield Theater Company, Stage One. Sweet. Yeah. Well, why don't you play us another tune, if you would? All right. We could. Uh, and we'll talk more about your gig tonight. All right. Well, let's play another new song. Why don't we do like Monster? All right, Monster. Yeah, we've got these new tunes, you know. It's a love song. Oh, oh yeah, it's, a, it's about I'll bet how <laughs> you turned it. Love turns you into a monster. <laughs> one, two, one, two, three. This is gory, this is tragic, this is just another story for the young lovers. On the slab down in the basement in the laboratory, there's a new subject under the covers. I recall the mindless days before the transformation, before the amputation of my heart in front of low, the pro that reached inside my nose and crawled up the walls and ripped out my so Insecurity and 
Caravan of Thieves in the Air Studio. That was Monsters. Monster. Yeah. Singular. Right. Just Let me introduce the band. We've got <laughs> Brian Anderson on the bass with an extended bass string. Bass extension. And why don't you explain that? Can, can you lean into that mic there and tell us about that? That's why, very sure strange. I can. <laughs> on my... He loves to talk about his bass. I love to talk about my bass. <laughs> it's a 1940K C1 Chubby Jackson model. That's been converted to a four string with a C string, no, a low C extension that goes all the way down to D and then down to C, which sounds great if you bow it. And it's done with it's done with two little levers he's got extending off the string that, that don't actually go on to is that they call that the head of the bass? Uh, the scroll. The scroll of the yeah. bass. And he can do it while you play. You can just yep. put them on and take them off. Pretty amazing. And, and, and what year did you say that bass was? A 1940K, and it gets worked on by Barry Colstein up in Long Island. Wow, that's really cool. Mm-hmm. And, and Fuzz, you have a, an interesting guitar that, that looks like it's got some age on it. Yeah, and I think I've put about 10 years on it in the last year or two. But it's a 1953 Martin 0015. Uh, same, same model as or same design as the pre-World War II 0017. And uh, it's got a. I got this because it has a really tight and warm tone to it. You know, I thought it'd be perfect for what we do. I liked it, and of course, I've beaten the crap out of it. <laughs> it it's start. It's starting to look a little bit like a Tommy Emmanuel guitar. Yeah, yeah. I, a lot of these scratches are, are my doing. So, uh, when I got it, it was in really nice shape. So, but it still sounds, and that's really the interesting thing about guitars that we can beat them up, and and sometimes it enhances the sound. You don't really want to put extra finish on a violin, do you? 